All right, we are on to the 2021 193. I have done the 2021 190, I've done the 2020 190. So now I'm on to the last one. So this video is probably gonna get, these videos are probably gonna get quicker and quicker as I go, because I'm probably just like trying to get it done here. So we're getting later on in the day. But I wanted to make a video just to cover this in case you specifically have a 2021-193. So we're gonna get rolling here. So here's what I've got for supplies. I've got three gallons of RV antifreeze. I've got the Camco hand pump, the Camco little fitting here to go into our city water connection, just a regular garden hose style. And I've put a, a fitting that uh, fits with my air compressor fittings on the other end. You can sometimes get some of these that just have one brass fitting with the nipple right on it. I went this route. Um, so got those two items and then I've got a regulator, an inline regulator on the end of my hair, air hose. I'm just running shop air and so it's easy for me just to put a regulator on the end of it and make sure that I don't over pressurize the system. So I've prepped slightly here. If you go in the storage compartment on this side you need to take out about five screws and, and there's actually a note on it, a little note about winterizing access. So I've, I've pulled that forward and we've got our hose to suck in the RV antifreeze. And we're also going to check the filter on the inlet side of the pump here while we're at it. So I've got that opened up. Um, I've got my water heater opened up. I've got an inch and sixteenth socket on a ratchet with an extension and then around the other side I've got the spray port hose hooked up and ready to go. This has been the tanks have been drained and all of that so in all other respects this is ready to go but now we need to get the water out of the lines and get some RV antifreeze in. So the first step we're going to do here is I'm going to open up the low point drains. You can see the note right there you look underneath, there's the low point drains. So we'll crack both of them open. And then we're gonna go up here. We're gonna open up the pressure relief on the water heater. And then I'm gonna take my ratchet and socket and I'm gonna pull out the animal. Okay, I cracked it loose. So we're gonna unscrew it, pull it out of there. And as usual, you can see the corrosion on it. So it's doing its job. I do keep some extra ones around. Um, but yeah, so that's what that one looks like and, and maybe I'll just throw, I haven't done enough seasons yet to know, maybe I'll just throw a new one in every season, they're certainly cheap enough, so it wouldn't be a big deal. So we're going to set that aside, we're going to let that drain, and alright, we have drained the water heater, so I'm going to reinstall the anode rod. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get the thread started because it wants to to hang down on the inside. Okay, I got those started. So I will tighten that down. We're gonna close the pressure relief valve. And then, I don't know if I got enough light in here, but if we go in here, so I've pulled out the panel. There's this panel right here, two screws, square drive, that sit, uh, the screws go on the bottom here, so we're right inside the storage compartment. Pretty easy to pull that out, and then we can go in here and we can turn these bypass valves. So now we've taken the water heater out of the system. So then we're gonna go up here and uh, we're gonna hook up our compressed air to the city water connection and we're gonna blow air through the system. Now that we've bypassed the water heater, we've gotten the low point drains cracked open, now we can flush out as much of the remaining fresh water as possible. We've got our adapter hooked up now, and I've got this dialed up to uh, 35 PSI or so. We don't need to kill it. So, uh, so yeah, we got it at about 35 PSI. So now we're gonna go back here. We're gonna crack open our low point drains again. And we'll see what we can get out of these. Now we'll do the hot one. Okay, that looks pretty good. Then we're gonna go around. We'll do the spray port next here. All right, I would say that's pretty good. Then we can 
step inside, we can do the kitchen sink. Then we're going to shower head. That looks pretty good. Then we're going to go over to the toilet. You kind of want to cautiously do that. It did spray a little bit of water. There's a bit of pressure behind it if you just go wide open. So we've got all those flushed out. So then we're gonna go back out here and we're gonna hook up. First thing we're gonna do is remove our air pressure. And then I'm gonna open up the low point drains back there and I'm gonna hook up my hand pump to a bottle of the RV antifreeze. And we're gonna pump it through until it starts coming out the low point drain. All right, low point drains open, pump hooked up. Try and, we'll try and do it one handed here. Not working well. <laughs> Cheating a little bit here. So it's important that you have the low point drains open so that you don't build up pressure in the system. We're just trying to, to pump fluid through. We're not trying to if it was pressurized, we just, the fun would stop pretty quick. It wouldn't go anywhere. And that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to actually get it to flow through the system. And it won't take a whole lot. I'm, of course, really not pumping a whole lot here because I'm doing it one handed. But I'm going to do it until I see it running out of the low point drains. All right, I've now closed the low point drains and we're done in that port. So the next thing I'm going to do, since we don't have any RV antifreeze through the pump right now and we've blown it out with air, uh, I'm going to at this point spin off this filter. This is really, in, in this particular unit, this is hard to catch on video, so I'm going to set it down. But this filter base unscrews and then there's a filter inside and I'm going to take it all out and clean it out and then put it back together again before introducing liquid back into the electric pump system. So this one was a lot better than my 21190. You can see there's hardly anything in the bowl, but when you look at the filter, you can see all the crud on the inside. So still very worth doing. So I'm going to clean this out, reassemble it and screw it back on there to the pump. And then we'll continue with the RV antifreeze. Okay, I've turned the valve inside there at the end of this hose run the hose into a an almost gallon of RV antifreeze and now I'm going to run inside we're going to turn on 12 volt pump we'll hear it run a little bit here and it's going to start sucking that that gallon down right away we're going to we'll just do the spray port right away outside since we're out here okay we got some antifreeze coming out of there we're going to step inside here And we're in the kitchen sink, got the antifreeze there, we'll go back. Get it going through the sink and the shower head. And then lastly, we'll cautiously open up the toilet valve. There we got that going. So now, I'm sort of curious what it's going to look like outside here. We'll see how much we use, because we're still running on the first gallon. And look at that. <laughs> we have tapped it out, so I should have turned the pump off inside here. But, uh, but yeah, we're good. We can turn the pump off and proceed to the next step. OK, 
Okay, I've now turned the valve back off into non-bypass mode for the pump. Put this cover back on, put the screws in. Back here I've done the same thing. I've flipped both those valves on the end of the water heater into the non-bypass position and put this cover on. I should also mention, before I did that, I went inside, I turned on the faucet just to drain any pressure out of the system so that when I opened up these, or when I switched these valves in the back here, it didn't drain a bunch of antifreeze into the water heater. Wouldn't be a huge problem, you just kind of want to rinse it out. So anyways, if we did it this way, then we avoided that problem altogether. So we've now got uh, antifreeze through all the plumbing. And, and I've mentioned in my other video on the 190 about this, but so the reason you want to do it this way, the reason I use both a hand pump as well as the bypass hose here is because we've got an inlet right here. Now there's not a lot, there's a, there's a very short run from here to where it tees into the rest of the system but I don't want to leave anything with just regular fresh water in it. So that's why I put the hand pump on. But the reason you can't use the hand pump for the whole system is because you're skipping the 12 volt pump that draws out of the fresh water tank. When you go into the city water connection, it completely skips the fresh water tank and therefore the pump. So when we hook up to that hose, that inlet hose, and we flip the, the valve in there, we're drawing it in and through the pump. The last thing you want to do is freeze the water in the pump and take out the pump. So that's why I'm doing it both ways. You could probably skip the hand pump, but I just feel like it's worth the extra 30 seconds to do that. And then mainly though, you need to use that bypass hose and valve under here so that you get RV antifreeze through the pump as well as the rest of the system. So now I'm gonna grab, so we're only in it one gallon so far. So now I'm gonna grab another couple gallons here and I'm gonna go and pour a gallon down the traps for the uh, kitchen and bathroom drains. And I'm gonna pour another gallon down the toilet. So I've got about a gallon in each one of the tanks to mix with whatever might residual stuff might be left in there. So here we are in the kitchen. And this goes to the same place as the shower. And the bathroom sink. I still have a little bit left here. Uh, we'll see, I'll probably go grab another gallon of it, but we'll that in there and like I said I'll go grab another gallon uh, it's worth the three bucks just to make sure that we've got everything diluted enough down in the tanks that we don't have any freezing issues all right so now that we're done with all the antifreeze stuff which is the main thing we're trying to do here but we still have a few few things left I'm gonna stand the mattresses up and that one I, I'm gonna take the uh, the sheet off of it but that's pretty much gonna stay like it is I'm going to also uh, to finish off the the antifreeze stuff. I'm gonna just wipe out all the fixtures and make sure I don't have uh, antifreeze still sitting in any of them. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, put dryer sheets throughout everything. I also emptied everything out. I've got a bin and I just pulled everything out of this camper. I've got three campers. I've got one bin per camper. I'm just emptying everything out into the bin stick it in my heated shed over the winter and I'm gonna tuck dryer sheets pretty much everywhere I can in these things under the mattresses or where the mattresses go uh, in the cupboards and everything um, just to help repel rodents and I also have some of the electronic rodent repellers I don't have them plugged in here yet but I'm going to plug one in right there and probably one in the bathroom and then uh, this camper will be plugged in the battery's gonna stay connected everything's gonna stay like live I'm not gonna flip the battery disconnect off or anything like that and then the rotor repelling electronic devices will also be running because it will be plugged into shore power in the shed that it's stored in. Uh, it's going to be dirt floor, so I will put some blocks under the tires, and then that's pretty much how it's gonna sit until spring. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you find this video helpful. Hopefully there's some tips in here that will make it a little easier for you, whether it's locating some of the stuff or just the process. Hopefully you enjoyed the video.